Greetings, ladies and managers, and welcome to this latest iteration of the much-expected series, The New Species Book 2, otherwise known as The New Threat. If you're new to the series, the original book will be listed down below in the description, and a playlist for this book will also be listed down below in the description. Anyways, I hope that if you enjoyed this series, you head over to the Royal Road link and give the appropriate thumbs up or five stars or whatever you feel is worthy. I know authors appreciate feedback, and I'm pretty sure that its director would appreciate it as well. Anyways, on to the story. Chapter 1 Subject, Shiphead Lena, Species Urakari Description, Reptilian Humanoid, No Tail, 5 foot 3 inches, 1.6 meters, Average Height 135 pounds, 61 kilograms, Average Weight 105 years, Life Expectancy Ship, RSV Lower Lana, Fights with Honor Location, Regara it's good to be back aboard the RSVS Lower Lana. The rest of the crew feels the same way. The entire crew had to go through some diplomatic courses, but I had to have the full-blown three-month training. I was extremely envious of the crew, who simply had to learn to not speak unless spoken to and avoid being where they're not supposed to be. For them, it had been a month in a classroom and two months of leave. For me, it was paperwork, lectures, tests, review certifications, and... Uh, more paperwork. The amount of paperwork a diplomat has to do is patently unhealthy. Staring at the screens that long has to be some sort of health and safety violation. At least the time away allowed the rest of the crew to distress a bit. We were even able to get crewed back up to 38. Our training had taken place on Galactic Diplomacy Station, which had previously been a conflict resolution forum. And there are officers for every Republic species, plus one for an unexpected first contact which the United Systems was now occupying. The station had fallen into disuse because there wasn't much conflict to resolve. It was quickly cleaned up and renamed, and now there were embassies for each Republic species and the U.S. I'd also finally gotten a good look at the Ulamari once the U.S. moved in. They weren't nearly as frightening as the Kinran. Eight limbs, eight eyes, and weird mandibles still made them somewhat creepy. But at least their limbs bent in proper directions and their movements were fluid. Kinran frequently have fast and jerky movements, like a puppet with an easily startled puppeteer. Oh well, my pay went up at ten percent, Intel had Kareen exclaimed, jerking me back to reality. Mine did, too. I'm pretty sure all of ours did, Nav had Kron explained. Mine only went up by six percent, Engineer Head Luna said sadly. You get paid more than they do, so a six percent increase is more money than they get. Kruna, my second, added. I have got five percent increase, but that's still more money. Yeah, you're right, second head. I just checked the math, Luna replied. Ah, how much did you get, shiphead? Kroon asked me. Everyone on the bridge turned to look at me with curious expressions. I had received more training than all of them, and my new job was much more intensive than theirs. So naturally, I should have received the largest raise. After all, going from a shiphead to a diplomat was a difficult change, but staying a shiphead while becoming a diplomat was even more tasking. One percent, I replied tersely. Eyes widened and jaws dropped. That's right, one measly percent for what has to be one of the most difficult jobs in the galaxy. Shiphead of a warship turned diplomat vessel, responsible for keeping a good relationship between the Republic and a devastatingly powerful Leviathan known as the United Systems. It was completely unfair that I didn't get a bigger raise, considering that I would be the first to die in a conflict with the U.S. Tim told me as much, just before we left for trading, in his typical cheery way. He informed me that if the United Systems and the Republic went to war, the Lower Lana would be the first target. Then they would target the Galactic Diplomacy Station of Rikara, followed immediately by the Republic Galactic in Winnerus. Sometimes talking to Tim is fun. Other times it's unnerving as hell. The decision to limit my raise had come down from my father, of all people. He had concerns that it would look like the Republic was rewarding me for dragging the United Systems into a war with the UO if they gave me proper raise. A loony, who was already making more money than my bridge crew combined, got a 10% raise for her new duties. Even though that wasn't at my father's discretion, it still felt like favoritism. Is that uh, more money than us? I like a uh, Lilna? Kryn asked hesitantly. No, Iris said. 
A few seconds of silence later, everyone quietly got back to work. We were once again being tossed to the Thanatos, which was currently stationed in Alpha Centauri. The Omni Union's last attack on Sol had happened just before the USS Nidhogg had been used on the UO's stronghold system. It had been three months since then, so there was plenty of concern regarding how large the next attack on Sol would be. In the Republic space, however, the attacks had started ramping up. We initially lost some of the territory that we had regained, but with help from the United Systems, we managed to take back and defend all of our territory. We weren't resettling yet because the risks were too high, but defending these systems prevents the UO from finding the inhabited ones. Word from the strategists is that they're probably trying to take out the Republic before swarming over the US. Ready to warp, sir, Kron informed me. Let's go, I replied. As we jumped to warp, I began to wonder about what was happening with my proposal. The United Systems and the Republic shipyards to build up their fleets was an idea that the Republic pounced on, and that's to be expected, because we had the most to gain. The United Systems was a lot more hesitant, though. They stand to gain more ships and more capable ally against the Omni Union, but there are those amongst the US that believe that they don't need either. Last month, the mobile prime platforms were declassified, so that probably has shifted opinions a bit. Hopefully, it isn't too late. Thankfully, we hadn't seen any of the MPPs since the invasion. We were woefully unprepared to go against a weapons platform the size of a planet controlled by an artificial intelligence. Even the nearly almighty United Systems took casualties against just one of them. But there are over a hundred. If they all attacked at once... Arriving in Alpha Centauri shiphead, Kron announced. Request clearance to dock with the Thanatos, I replied. They've already granted it, Kryn said with a chuckle. I don't understand, Gruner said. Is the Thanatos behind that asteroid? Everyone on the bridge turned to look at her and held their breath. We had all been waiting for this moment. She hadn't been exposed to the United Systems before, and everyone was anticipating her reaction. The briefing had contained all the measurements, but most officers understandably glaze over such things. That is not an asteroid. That is the Thanatos, I said with a grin and a comedic sigh. People really need to start reading their briefings. It took a second for my statement to register, but once it did, her eyes widened and her jaw dropped. The USS Thanatos was the largest ship she'd ever seen. It wasn't even the largest carrier that the United Systems had. It was actually considered a small diplomatic carrier. You could see these thoughts enter her head as she struggled to process this, everyone else grinning like children. All right, let's get docked. I've got a meeting to get to, I order as I lean back in my chair. At least my orders were simple. Meet with Captain Reynolds, do what he says, put out fires between the U.S. and Republic senior officers, and integrate with the U.S. diplomatic corps which, according to Reynolds, would be much easier to do aboard the Thanatos than it would be on the Galactic Diplomatic Station. I didn't know it was a good sign or a bad sign that the humans would rather have me in their space than aboard a Galactic Diplomatic Station. On the one hand, it signified a certain level of trust and friendship. On the other hand, it made it easier to kill me if things went wrong. I sighed quietly as I felt the clamps close around the lower lana, scooped up again, Pretty undignified for a ship of a dignitary. Not like there was any other way for us to dock, though. The actual docking bays were designed to hold U.S. frigates, which were one and a half times larger than the lower lana. We're too small for those clamps, even if they weren't in use. The emergency bay had maneuverable clamps, so it could theoretically grab onto any ship it needed to, including us. Docked and locked, shiphead, Kron said. Excellent work, I replied. Then I keyed the ship wide comms. Attention all personnel. We have docked with the USS Thanatos. After completing your immediate tasks, you are on shore leave for the rest of the day. A cheer rang throughout the ship. Some things never change. Bright and early tomorrow, you are to report to your diplomatic assignments. If you do not know what your assignment is or where it is, check with second head Gruda. She has the list. Anyone who isn't where they're supposed to be tomorrow will be subject to confinement. A groan rang throughout the ship. No whining! We're a diplomatic ship now, and that's how diplomats operate. I'd better be seeing you tomorrow, fully functional. Dismissed! Another cheer rang throughout the ship. 
I disembarked before any of them managed to, and was met by a familiar hologram. The robed figure was holding a curved blade, what I know of to be called a scythe. The figure waved a greeting to me with his bony hand. Great tiding, ship Adelina. I assume your trading was productive? Omega asked. Yeah, it was pretty enlightening and educating, I replied. Is everything okay? Yes, for now. Why do you ask? I wasn't expecting to be greeted by you. I was expecting Tim. Oh, Omega asked, tilting his head to the side. Care to elaborate on these expects? of yours while you follow the dark lights. The lights on the floor lit up. I began to follow them as I tried desperately to think of something to say to not offend the United System's most powerful AI. Well, I, uh, it's just, um, uh, Tim seems more suited to guiding, I replied and instantly regretted my word choice. Is that right? Am I not suited to guiding people? I've been guiding the United Systems for <laughs> centuries, you know, it replied. It's teasing me, trying to get me to stutter and stumble over my words. Omega wouldn't actually be offended by a slip of the tongue, I hope. That's just my point, though. You're more specialized for oversight than Tim is, at least to my understanding. Having you guide me to my meeting with Reynolds is like having Fleethead as a secretary. There are no such things as specialized artificial intelligence, Alina. Some dedicated more time to gaining certain knowledge than others. But this doesn't prevent them from gaining further knowledge in other fields. As a matter of fact, with our memory capabilities, we're more suited to generalization than any organic ever could be. The AI lectured. That being said, Tim doesn't currently hold the credentials required to know about your beating let alone guide it to it. I hadn't actually thought about it. I suppose that all it would take for an AI to take over the position of another AI is a brief learning window. I wondered if Tim could do Omega's job before what Omega said had finally sunk in. No, oh, I'm guessing my meeting with Reynolds has been cancelled, I asked. No, just put on hold. You have another, <laughs> more brassic meeting to attend first. Who's the new meeting going to be with? You'll find out presently, Omega said with a chuckle at the nervousness of my tone. <laughs> it's classified, after all. I see. I assume that the reason for the meeting is also classified, then? Correct. Of course it is. End of chapter. I would just quickly like to thank the T5 peeps. Dragon Soup, Cold War Boomer Waffen, Severin Cerberus, Red Panda 121, Leslie 517, Bushmaster 177, Casper Arnold, Cam Maxwell, Sans the Skeleton, Lightjock, Dragzoon WRE, and Lord Azrakal. Thank you very much.